Today is April 18th, 2015, and I'm here to share with you my project for BUA 271. I have come up with an invention that I call the Inner Wheel Well Heater. I came up with my project idea after getting a severe speed wobble going down the interstate while going to school. This past January and February, we had a lot of snowy and icy conditions that led to wheel wells filling up with ice overnight. I experienced insufficient braking, and when I went to go turn my car, my tires didn't seem to want to go with a steering wheel as well as they should have. After getting out and inspecting, I noticed that my wheel well was completely engulfed with snow. Something that struck my mind at that moment was why is there not a heater inside my wheel well to keep this ice from building up? And that's where my project idea came from. Most of us don't take the necessary time in order to clean out your wheel wells with an ice scraper in the morning, let alone if it was even soft enough where you could break it out without breaking your ice scraper itself. I wanted to des design a product that was hands-free, could be reusable on a daily or as needed basis, and gave people the safety comfort they needed in order to travel without worrying about their wheels filling up with ice or even have a vehicle component malfunction on them such as your brakes or your tires or a tie rod giving out because of the stress of the ice. I knew this product needed to be strong. Um, a big concern of mine was it being in a harsh environment of a vehicle it was going to see wet conditions. So when I started to do product research, I knew I would have to use types of components for my product that would be able to handle the icy and wet conditions that they would be facing on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, even when these vehicles would not be using them for their functioning, they would still be seeing mud and ice and uh, water building up inside the wheel well as all cars do. The next portion of my project that I'd like to go over with you is the SWOT analysis. The SWOT analysis stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. I believe this analysis gives us a good representation on where your product may stand, um, especially in the beginning stages like we are. By identifying the strengths that you have, you're giving yourself uh, the confidence that you need in order to continue your product into uh, further production. By observing the opportunities that you have, um, you understand the capabilities of where your company can go from your idea or where your product will be taken to the next step. By understanding your weaknesses, you're looking also at the internal side of your company. Um, you might know where your lacking, uh, whether it might be production or marketing, or uh, also advertising falls under marketing. Uh, you could have financial work that could be better taken care of. And what you're doing in, under weaknesses is observing these and trying to come up with a list of how you might be able to fix those. The last component making up the SWOT analysis are threats. Uh, threats are an external force um, acting against your company. Um, these could be anywhere from competitors or not having enough financial uh, backing from other people that you need. Um, these threats need to be taken seriously because they could really affect where you're planning on taking your company or your new product to the next level. Now to dig into my product and the SWOT analysis that I've come up with. Um, to start with the strengths, we'll go and write in chronological order. Um, a strength that I view for my product is that it is new. Um, there have been ideas of creating a product like this before, but nothing has ever gone completely through the design phase and into production quite the same way of the idea that I have. Um, I see this as a strength because viewers see a new product. Um, I'm advertising it for safety concerns of vehicles and I feel like that's a strong point because vehicles strive to be safer um, year after year. Many new features such as side curtain airbags and rear view cameras have really stepped up their game as far as distributing them to um, motor companies and this is where I like to take my product. Um, being new, there's room for innovation. I also see that as a strength. 
and um, really the customer input on how this the feedback comes back to me would really be the strong point of where I would take the company to the next point. Another strength that I bring to my product is having a electrical and heating background. Um, I'm no master electrician yet, but having an, a background in heating and knowing the how heat and resistive heat work really give me an upper edge compared to maybe a competitor, competitor that has the idea but is not really sure how to use it. Um, what I'd like to do is train employees or at least make sure that they have an electrical background deep enough to work on something that they can understand. Um, I feel like knowing how to use what you're building is also a very strong component to um, our company and would be a great strength when um, mass production started to take off. Having employees that were highly qualified and trained would also um, benefit, but the electrical background really can give you the great understanding of the product that you need in order to create something that is functioning. A few weaknesses that may be of concern to us are that we are in theory the guinea pigs of the product. Um, like I said, there's been a few other ideas of similar products, but the prototype I've made is actually functioning and um, could be sent down the design, design process in order to be reevaluated and have a few things change here or there. Um, being new, we're taking a big risk of um, complete failure. There's nothing compa to compare to. And um, as a weakness internally, um, the price of our product might be higher than people would be willing to pay. Like I said before, our components will be um, hazard proof, which means that all the electric electrical components will be protected from the weather and wet hazardous conditions. Um, these material costs um, run higher than something you might not see outside. Um, as do any products of similar electronic interests, such as speakers that are waterproof or used for indoor grade. Um, a weakness to this is keeping our production costs down. Something that we'll have to take in consideration is not cutting corners, but trying to buy in bulk to lessen the burden of the cost to us and to the consumer buying our products. The opportunities that we can focus on is trying to market in an untapped market. Um, what this is saying is our product is new and the sky is the limit for marketing and distribution. Um, what I'd really like to try to do is focus on the regions that are going to see icy and snowy conditions because this is the type of people that would be using a product uh, such as ours. Um, Focusing on areas where people commute a lot would be a high interest of ours. And another opportunity that we may have is um, the growth and expansion of our company. Um, if our product takes off as a hit, we may have the opportunity to sell to a larger organization or even have uh, financial backing through another lender that saw our, our product as a, a useful tool and a money maker to them. As far as threats go, um, a big concern for us is our product eventually taking off and in the growth stage having other competitors that want to try to tap their way into the market. Um, where we see this as a threat is a large organization that may be able to produce our, our product that's similar at a faster rate and for less of a cost. Um, another threat are competitors that are creating a, a product that is not to the same quality standards but a lot cheaper. Uh, as a consumer myself I understand that people look at the value that are getting but at the same time sometimes cost does play a, a big role in if they're going to purchase um, 
product A over product B. I'd like to next go over the break-even point for my product. Um, the break-even point takes uh, the fixed cost that a company incurs, um, the variable costs, and the price of their product. And it uses a formula to calculate how many units would need to be sold at a certain price um, in order to break even. And for my product, I've determined a total fixed cost of $90,000 a year. Um, this includes a salary for my general manager, um, a $3,000 monthly lease for a building, and also $5,000 in um, equipment depreciation as far as the tools that we'll be using on a day-to-day -day basis. I've come up with a variable cost per unit of $46.04. Um, this is per wheel well. Um, this cost is a combination of all of the materials that it'll take to make the product, including uh, rubber matting, um, RTV silicone, um, heat cable, and electrical, comp electrical components such as fuses or relays. Um, this could change um, due to, I also added um, a single wage per product that it would cover a expenses of our hourly workers. After using these numbers in the break-even formula, I came out with 6,400 units that would need to be sold in order for my product to break even. Um, this is roughly 1,600 vehicles that would require um, one wheel well heater for each of their four wheel wells. And I see this as a very attainable number for a new company like ours. Um, 1,600 in the grand scheme of things is um, very low compared to the number of vehicles that this product is suitable for. Um, I think it gives us a great range to expand upon. And I also believe that um, fixed and variable cost would creep up a little bit higher than I calculated, but not having any further information into the company, I feel like these are uh, pretty factual numbers that I could base this off of. I would now like to demonstrate and show you the product I've created. In this prototype model, I used Raychem 3 watt per foot um, heat tape wire. I use black rubber 6 millimeter and I also use RTV silicone in order to create this heat pad that is fully sealed at both ends on the inside with RTV all the way encased around the whole product. Um, on the opposite end I have the heat wire coming in with heat shrunk um, water resistive um, coating in order to protect all electrical connections. Um, also, on the dead end of the resistive side of the heater, I have the same thing. Um, for prototype purposes, I made this heater in a 120 volt scale and I will plug it in to demonstrate its heat properties. I have this here tool that uh, measures temperature um, non-contact with a little laser beam uh, ray that I use in the heating field. Um, if I point it on the pinpoint side of the product right in the dead center as you can see the lasers on here I'm shooting at about 89-90 degrees at the warmer points. The farthest I've gotten up to is uh, 95 degrees which is plenty warm enough to melt ice. Um, People might see this product and not think that it heats warm enough, but at the same time, you don't need 200 degree rubber matting to keep melt, uh, ice from melting from underneath your car. Um, I believe that this is a safe temperature range and uh, it would not harm any other vehicle components. And at the same time, you are also getting the functionality of the heat tape inside. Again, I'll show you one more time. I got 89 degrees there. Um, for any product, there is something called the product life cycle. And this life cycle um, consists of the introduction, the growth, 
the maturity and the decline of a product. Um, all products throughout time go through all of these stages and for some they take um, hundreds of years and some go through all stages in just a few months. Um, a few different types of categories that I've learned about in uh, my reading is um, a fad, a style, or a fashion. Um, these all come into play in the product life cycle as far as the way consumers can view certain products and categorize them. Um, where I see my product fitting in is um, under the fashion category. Um, it may not be seen as a necess necessary need, but um, people will view this product as something with some structure to it and also a purpose. Um, opposed to something that may be a fad that is in style for a very short period of time and dies off. Um, long story short is I believe that my product will take off in the growth stages if our introduction stage is played out right. Um, our marketing and distribution team would have to really push our product um, rapidly in the introduction stage to get as many viewers out there as possible. Um, our growth stage is where we could really um, start to turn a profit and if that was something that peaked for us and turned into our maturity that's where we would be reevaluating this product and seeing where we could make changes and alter it um, for future need uh, so we don't see that decline slope lasting so long. Um, to give a time frame, I believe our growth would take roughly a year um, to start to climb up. I don't expect it to climax that fast, but I do see um, the product having to change with the market and um, adapt to any corrections that we'd have to make. I'd like to give you my overall view or impression of how this project went. Um, we were given a few months to come back with an idea and develop this whole plan. Um, back in January when I read about this task I started brainstorming ideas and I wanted to come up with something that as I said before could could benefit the people uh, that live in the surrounding areas me and also be widespread. Um, from what I viewed is there takes a lot of prep work in order to come up with a complete design to even lay it on the table and make it an idea. Um, what I mean by that is just because you have an idea for a product it doesn't mean that this product is going to be made or um, even thought of as a, a patent. Um, from what I've come up with is an idea, a product, a way I see fit that this product could be implemented into a business um, and also deciding that this product has the potential of growth and change for the good. Um, where I'd like to conclude is I'd like to restate my mission to you guys that our company is here to create a product to better the people. Um, we'd like to create something that could help save lives, um, be safer, cause less accidents, damage and wear to your cars would also be a, a very main concern, but um, we can't compromise safety here, uh, especially where road conditions can be as ha hazardous as they are. Um, I'd like to conclude by saying that um, I've enjoyed making this product and um, doing the research behind it to figure out what materials will work well with others. And if there are any questions, I would like you to leave them below on this YouTube video um, so I could maybe clear up any confusion or um, illustrate a better picture to you. Thank you.